This is a teardown of a dividing head that I'd purchased some time ago. It is a Precision Matthews dividing head. It is a BS1 or Brown and Sharp 1 type of a dividing head. I'm going to start off by taking out the worm shaft. It's held in by a single screw. It takes in a 4mm key to open it and the housing for the worm shaft comes out pretty easily. It's a very tight snug fit. The worm gear hub has a fair heft to it and this is the worm shaft that I'm taking out right now. The worm itself has a fair amount of grease on it and the shaft has got a spiral that runs along the length of it. The hub has an oiling port at the top uh, that I'm pressing right now and that allows a drop of oil to go down onto the worm shaft and presumably as the worm shaft is turned it moves the oil along the shaft and keeps it lubricated inside the hub itself. Now this is the opening where the hub was residing and having taken that out you can actually see the worm gear in there. The inside of the casing also looks dirty to me like this gunk, debris, dirty old, I don't know what, in there. Uh, so it'll be good to open it up and take a good look. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the quick indexing plate. It is held in place with three cap screws that require a three millimeter Allen key to get out and they weren't torqued down too hard wasn't difficult to get them out. And the quick indexing plate comes off pretty easily. Nice and hefty, a little bit of gunk in the back, just perhaps some old oil but easy enough to remove. A little bit of oil and grease residue but it cleans up quite nicely. Next I'm going to remove the front bearing seat. It requires a 4mm Allen wrench and again the screws are not torqued down too hard. Next I'm going to remove the two clamping shafts. They're basically rods with uh, threading on both ends. One end takes regular nuts and uh, with a washer under them. The other side is a bit more interesting. It has um, a brass washer that has had a section cut out of it. That, <clears throat> you will see in a moment, is what allows the brass washer to pull tight against the inside of the dovetail and when you crank on these rods the brass clamps against the dovetail and keeps the assembly from rotating in a horizontal axis. Next we'll look a little bit at how the backlash is adjusted between the worm and the worm gear. There is a screw in the front face that locks the backlash adjusting screw in place. So this screw is loosened and then this large screw on this side pushes up against the shaft carrying the worm and by pushing with a certain amount of tension it helps to control the backlash between the worm and the worm gear. Now with the screw loosened up uh, you can see that there's a ton of backlash uh, just wiggling the worm shaft back and forth. Uh, it's pretty easy to see that it's about maybe 70-80 degrees worth of backlash before the uh, spindle shaft starts to move at all. Now this is the retaining nut that holds the whole spindle in place. It has what appears to be a set screw needing a 3 millimeter wrench to keep it locked in place and it's just a cap screw and the spindle itself or rather the nut itself requires a spanner wrench 
it was not torqued down crazy hard. It was relatively easy to loosen up and easy enough to make the whole thing come apart. Okay, taking the nut out, you can see a washer there and the needle bearing in the back. A fair amount of grease, but it doesn't look very ugly. The grease also <laughs> makes the needle uh, bearings kind of stuck in there. So I'm trying to use a pick to get it out and it came out nicely. Now I'm going to push in the back and I am shocked. The whole assembly comes out really easily. It's got a ton of grease on it, but it wasn't hard to push it out at all. I did not have to hammer on it. There's a little bit of dark colored oil there, a ton of grease. Um, the bearing spins surprisingly easily. Uh, despite the grease, it just spins without any trouble at all. Now to look inside and see what's actually going on in there. And I think you can see a little bit better that the inside was looking very dirty. Okay, now I'm checking for burrs. There seem to be some burrs along the front end and along the outer sides of the dovetails, but the inside seems pretty smooth. Nothing sharp on the inside at all. All right, and the head does not want to come out of the dovetails. And there it just seems to get a bang, uh, like there's something just jammed strictly in place. Next, I'm going to try to remove various parts. Uh, I'm going to remove the pinion that drives the locking pin for the quick indexing plate. The pinion basically had no grease on it, but it doesn't rotate fast. Then I'm going to go ahead and remove the front bearing seat. It's a very nice, snug, tight fit, but with a gentle rocking action, it pulls out very smoothly. Now the back of the hub looks very nice and clean. It's smooth, no sharp edges uh, at all. And the head itself rolls very easily, uh, virtually no resistance, very smooth movement. Now this is a look at the rear bearing surface and you can see that there's a slit that runs along it and that is fed by oil from above. And still trying to get it out. Very, very difficult despite the fact that I've removed all the parts that could be removed. I've removed the front indexing lock from there. Just won't budge. Okay, now this is the first time I've seen any shavings at all. These look like tiny brass shavings from the nuts that were in there that hold the dovetail clamped together. Okay, I got it off. It took uh, putting it on its side and a little bit of gentle rocking action and that allowed the whole thing to come apart. I think it was just that it was uh, so snug and so tight that it just wouldn't come out. And here's the base, very clean not a single shaving seen in there. The dovetails are very smooth. The inner edges are very smooth all the way through. Nothing sharp at all. The outer edges are sharp, but that's not a bearing surface. And it's sharp out here as well. But again, the insides where it matters, very smooth, very, uh, very slick. And <laughs> no gunk, no gunk at all. Okay, time for a good cleanup now. I've put some mineral spirits in there, uh, put the whole spindle assembly in there, and uh, I'm cleaning it out. And as I'm running the bearing through the mineral oil, the grease is coming off very easily. And it does not seem to be rough at all. Here is the worm, again after having run it through some of the grease cleaner. And you can see its tip has got a tiny little ball bearing that I presume helps with proper tensioning. It is just under six, we'll call it six millimeters in diameter. All right, after some clean out, the whole thing spins very freely, very easily. Nothing different, or nothing difficult about that at all. No crunchiness um, either. And here's the thrust bearing and that too 
looks very nice and smooth, very clean, spins easily. And this is the locking washer in the back. It's officially called a split retaining nut and it's an M25 by 1.5 and that split compresses down when the screw that goes into it right there tightens and that probably grabs onto the threads and keeps the thing from backing out and maintains the proper thrust preload. This is the hole for the mounting bracket for holding the worm shaft in place and it's secured with just a single screw. This is what keeps it from rotating or maintains the correct angle for engaging the worm shaft and the gear. Well, thanks for watching. The next video will be about putting it all back together again and I will be posting that uh, in the near future. Thank you.